Welcome to this lesson on Lunch with the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're continuing our study in the book of Philippians, uh, chapter 4. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Now, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 20, Paul is giving his final appreciation for the gift that the Philippians sent to him by the hands of Epaphroditus while he was in prison at Rome. Remember, this letter uh, of Philippians was written by Paul as a thank you for this gift that was sent to him. He appreciated it tremendously. And Paul wants to give his final thank you uh, in this letter. All right? Now, in verse 10, But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me has flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. And it had been a while since Paul had received a gift from them, not because they fell out of interest for him, but because they lacked opportunity, okay? They had the means to provide a gift for Paul, but it wasn't always easy to get that gift to Paul. You know, today we have cars and bicycles, motorcycles, trains and planes, and, <laughs> and now with FedEx and UPS, you can, send, uh, you can send anything you want from where you are all the way across the world in a day or two, right? Maybe even the next day. But it wasn't like that in, in Paul's day. They had horses and donkeys and whatever, but they didn't have cars, <laughs> cars and motorcycles and trains and all that stuff. So Paul here is saying uh, that he appreciates the gifts tremendously and he realizes that the reason why they sent the gift wasn't because they, they forgot about Paul or... They, they lost interest in Paul's life. No, no. It was because they lacked an opportunity to send the gift to him. When Paul did finally receive this gift, it was like watching the plants and flowers springing up in the springtime. Because the Bible here, Paul, Paul uses this, this phrase, he says, he says, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me, what's the next two words? Hath flourished, hath flourished, okay? Again, in the Greek here, this Greek word for hath flourished, has it, the proper meaning of this Greek word was used to describe plants and flowers growing green again. After the winter, you, the springtime comes and the plants begin to grow green. They spring up. The trees bud. And, and it means to spring up, to flourish again. So Paul uses this beautiful word to describe how he feels about their gift to him. It's like it was, the gift that they sent to him was like, was like this, this flower just starting to blossom. And he says, it's, that's, that's what your gift was to me. It was, it was like trees budding. And, they, and you have that smell of spring in the air. It's like a flourishing, this growing, this newness of life. I would, Paul was saying, I was revived again. Like, uh, I was revived into new life, like, like the springtime. So Paul says, uh, your care of me has flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. I understand it was difficult, but you had an opportunity now through the hands and through the sacrificing of Epaphroditus, who decided to give of his life to go to Rome and deliver this gift uh, to Paul. And now verse 11 
Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Now we're coming to a very beautiful part of this letter, and it's the, the section on contentment, on contentment. And he says, not that I speak in respect of want, and Paul want, doesn't want the Philippians to think that he was complaining because he hadn't received anything from them for a while. Paul says, I'm, I'm, I'm like this flower that is just budding again. I'm excited because you re, you, you, you supplied my need while I was in prison and it's refreshing to me. And Paul said, but I want you to know that I wasn't, I wasn't seeking the gift. He said, I, I was seeking the giver of that gift, which was you. The Philippian, the Philippian people. He says, you're my heart. You're my joy. You're my crown. It's not the gift that I really want. It's you and your heart and your love for me. He says, that's what's exciting. And, and Paul says, I don't want you to think that I'm covetousness, that, I, that I'm filled with covetousness of, of the things, that I want things from you. No, no. It's not that I want things from you. He, Paul says, I want you. He says, I'm glad that you sent me something. That's great. But more important is, I want you. I love you. And I know you love me also. And he says, not that I speak in respect of want. And then Paul says, now this is important. Paul says, for I have learned. For I have learned. Now, this, this Greek text, when Paul says, for I have learned, it means to increase one's knowledge. It means to learn by use and practice, okay? So there was something that Paul did not know before, something that he hadn't experienced yet, all right? So Paul says, he says, not that I speak in respect of wanting it's something, for I have learned something. And Paul's saying that, I, in my life, there was something that I didn't know. I had no knowledge of, but now I've learned this thing, okay? And what is it that he's learned, okay? He says that in whatsoever state I am to be content. To, I hadn't learned that before, but now I've learned it. And as we studied earlier in, in lessons earlier before this, uh, Paul was, was brought to having a well-to-do life. Remember, Paul was brought up in a well-to-do life, okay? Uh, he had parents that were well off. He lived in Tarsus, which was a well-to-do city. And he had the best education available to him. Not only did Paul have all of this going for him, but he also took advantage of it, okay? Paul just wasn't some spoiled rich rich kid. Oh no. <laughs> Paul Paul took advantage of this of this glamorous life that he had having well-to-do parents, a well living in a well-to-do uh, town of Tarsus, living uh li having all kinds of money and prestige in the Jewish community among Judaism, right? And Paul Paul took advantage of it. He went to school under Gamaliel, right? And he also, he said that he also increased in his Judaism beyond anyone else of his peers. So he was very zealous for the Jewish faith and for, for Judaism. Oh, he didn't, he didn't just, you know, sit home and play video games all day. No, no, oh no. He, or he didn't take mommy and daddy's money and travel around the world and, and use it all up. No, he took advantage of of this opportunity and he was very zealous uh, of his faith okay that he had and he had very he had very little if any experience in the state of poverty or in the state of need okay Paul as Paul grew up in his younger years Paul knew nothing of poverty Paul knew nothing of being in need of anything he had he had the luxury of this world at his feet 
and he took advantage of it. He knew what 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 it was uh, to be uh, in uh, to be highly educated and to have the advantages of life. And Paul said that uh, Paul didn't have any experience in being in in poverty, in being in need. But you know, since coming to Christ on the Damascus Road, God stripped away all of his past and all of his comforts. When he gave his heart to Christ, when God met him on that Damascus Road and he and he came to Christ, God had to strip away it all. He took it all away. All of the prestige and the honor and the glory that came with his with his Judaism and with his upbringing that he had it was all taken away. He was taken down to nothing. Okay, and God enrolled Paul in God's school, and and the classes that God taught Paul would result in learning one thing, one thing: contentment, contentment. God, God said to Paul when when he got saved, Paul, I'm going to enroll you in my school now. No, no, it's not going to be mommy and daddy's school anymore. It's going to be my school. And you know what you're going to learn? <laughs> when it's all done, when it's all said and done, oh, you're going to have everything taken away from you, Paul. You're going to have everything taken away from you, but you're going to learn one thing, one thing, and that is contentment with me. Being content with me in all situations of life and that and that was God's school and you know what that's God's school for you and for me when we came to Christ God had to strip away all of it he had to strip it all away take us down to nothing to learn to be content with him be content in Christ with his life right and we're going to get into contentment. We're going to continue this verse next lesson. All right? Until next lesson, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.